my first job. What was your first job on earth? What did that teach us? Welcome to my first job with my amazing friend, Nacho Sponsor, creator of Dreams Coming to True for Dentist, Stephen oh. Treader. But before we talk about what you do now, Stephen, mm -hmm. yes. tell our audience, what was your first job on earth? My first job on earth, um, I mowed lawns, uh, was my very first job on earth as uh, probably about 12 years old. I uh, found a number of lawns in my neighborhood, including a couple of churches in the park in my small town where I grew up in central Illinois. And I mowed lawns. So I drive down the street with my uh, lawn, you know, like on the riding lawnmower. Yeah. And I had like the push lawnmower, like I would drive like this down the street. So Sounds very unsafe. Um, yeah, well, you know, it was the, you know, early, it was the late 80s. There was a lot of things that were yeah, unsafe. Yeah, no rules back then. I, I, I'm, oh. I'm impressed by your entrepreneurial spirit in a serious way. What did that teach you about whether it's working with people, dealing with complaints, yeah. marketing yourself? How did that first job, that experience of mowing lawns? I don't help? think it was that much of a marketing thing. I think for me, actually, it was uh, on that particular job. I think it was... Uh, making sure that I did a good job, you know, in other words, like almost like, Hey, not going through the motions, like making sure that the lawn looked nice for the, the homeowners or because one of them was actually the big park in my town. It took me a couple of hours to do. Yeah. Um, it was like, I wanted the park to look nice. And, you know, my dad would inspect things and things like that. And so it taught me, um, accountability. It taught me organizational skills, like, Hey, when I need to get things done at a certain time. And it taught me to think about things from a uh, uh, being elite. In other words, like not elitist, but more like doing it right and doing yeah. things the right time. That way it looked right and getting the job done in the right way so that people were satisfied. I love that. And also, you know, that you can feel the pain of dentists. And we're going to get into what you do now more. But sometimes yeah. we could work on a front tooth filling and I could think I've done a good job. And the patient yeah. says, great, Paul, I'm ready to go. And then a patient goes, what about this little corner over here? And the next thing you know, we have spent the next 47 minutes, you know, trying to fix something. So you also have to know when to stop, right? So I'm just curious, when have your, were any of your customers, tough customers yeah. uh, with some of their expectations? And did you eventually develop a core where you could say, hey, Mrs. Smith, this is the best it's going to be. This is what we do here. How did you deal with that part of it? Uh, I think as a as a child, it was it was more of a, I, I think it even relates to today. It's setting the right expectations of what the environment is, but also, hey, there are, there are, there are times where um, it, it may not be the answer that people want to hear, but it's an answer that has to be given, you know, for whatever it is, whether it's in what I do now or what I even did then as as, as a child, where there were circumstances, but at the same time, it was always a learning experience of the uh, of adapting to others personalities right and understanding like they have a different view of like of, of what their expectation uh, of, of what ne something needs to be done and, and and unfortunately sometimes um it it may not fit the exact expectation i, I agree it's what you have to learn in all uh jobs in your life when you when you're a fit or when you're not a fit now next yep. question people tell young people they need to get people skills. You got to have people skills, get yes. people skills. Yes. But so far I have not seen any advertisements for the online university of people skills. So Is what job degree? helps you with your people skills? What helped me with my uh, people skills? Um, I would say my first job out of college, um, I sold copiers in Chicago and I learned, I, I became a manager young. I, after I had I was, a, I was a good rep. I had good numbers and they're like, Hey, cool. You know, they're like, Oh, be a manager. I, I, was a, I was a horrible manager, but I learned from that experience of being a horrible manager and that everybody needs to be uh, managed differently. I think I came from like the management style of like, do this, do this, crack the whip and, and everything. And then understood that people reacted differently to that to get the most out of them. And then in my role in, in what I've done here at Ideal Practices for the last almost 10 years now, um, helped me even develop even greater skills because um, taking courses on that, but also understanding like everybody has different and doing personality tests and things like that, like discs and everything like that is profound. Yeah. So for dentists that are out there, you should be doing some sort of personality, whether it's disc or something 
that gets to understand because everybody is motivated differently in how you talk to people to get to get the most out of themselves takes a different level of it takes different it takes different skills and takes different talking points for the motivation and for them to accomplish what they want to accomplish as well. The really awesome points. I had a coach early on who called it situational leadership because, you know, I think one thing that's sometimes unfair, you know, where do you learn leadership skills? Where do you learn management skills? There's not many places for that. So you think I just got to do it the same way with everybody, but yep. you find out quickly that that is not going to get you to the place you want to be. So now I yeah. want you to tell our audience yeah. What do you do every day to help Dennis dreams come true? What is ideal practices? What do you focus on? Who's your yeah. core client? I'm really into clarity. It's very overwhelming to yeah. be a dentist, Stephen. Yes. This company does this. This person does this. This consultant does this. So give us your, yeah. explain it to me. I like I'm a six-year-old version of what does ideal practices do every day? <laughs> well, uh, this it, it, now it's going to be like a self-promotion. Uh, but it's like- That's okay. Be the Startup Dentist, my book. Okay. That's what we do. Like- startup dental practices. Uh, I, I, I would love to help you, Paul, with your practice, but I'm not a fit. Um, you, you, you know what you need. There are different consultants and different coaches and dentor, different mentors for those that have been open. What we help is the associate dentist, the young dentist who are like, I want to become a practice owner and I want to do a startup. Cool. That's what we do. We do it well. We know it backwards and forwards. Uh, my entire team helps take young associates and give them a path of avoiding the typical struggles of the typical startup that you see and avoiding the pitfalls and opening up really successful startup practices. That's I love that. Now, so hold your book up again. This company, Dennis Job Connect, got two companies. They're like my uh, children. They both drive me crazy. No, I'm just joking. I, I love them the same. So uh, Dennis Job Connect has put that book in the hands of 358 dentisting humans. And we continue to do that. People can go into the comments and register to get a free book while supplies last because I believe it's so important because it is one of the number one questions I get. What's the difference between a startup and acquisition? Should I start up a practice? Yeah. So what motivated me to create Dennis Job Connect, St Stephen, was I saw yeah. there was a missing link in the market for how to find a job. You could pay a recruiter 20 grand. Uh -huh. You could try to spam a Facebook group for free. I said, there's got to be a better way. And we're very excited, proud of what we're doing at Dennis Job Connect to be an affordable and amazing solution for associate dentists to find it. jobs. Love what it. motivated you to create ideal? When did you create it? And what motivated you to create it? Uh, it's created um, nine years ago, basically like this month. And it was created out of the, the, the gap, the yeah. gap that existed in uh, having seen so many young dentist startup practices that the typical path would be like, I, I like to call it the trial and error, but in trial and error in startups, Error is not a good thing. You end up with just error and okay. error means failure or struggling. You know, we've all, we all know the dentist around the corner who's only open two days a week and they've been open two days a week for three or four years. Yeah. They didn't have a path. And we saw that the, the younger dentist, you know, when I started almost 20 years ago, it was like startup, you could just hang your shingle. You'll be fine. And then it became, oh, wait a minute. There's a science to demographics. There's a science to a floor plan. There's a science to how do these whole things lay out? Oh, I need to be a business owner. Well, I don't have the business skills it, it, in, oh, marketing, like marketing was taboo in the dental industry 25 right. years ago. Now it's like, it's a strategy of getting in. None of those strategies exist for startups. They were kind of like in different pockets and one person can do this. How do we collectively put it together so that someone can follow a tutorial, go through a process and actually launch a practice step-by-step? Step. The I, gap I, was there and we filled it. I think what, you mean, I've, you know, we've become so close to know what you guys do. And I think you should say it's treatment planning your startup. So you wind up smiling and not crying. Is and I say this in a serious way because I've had coaching clients who their startups have totally failed and they've had to declare bankruptcy. I've had we've all had dentists a... that leave, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted you to have on this dentist job connect show, because I want to walk us through this. Yeah. Let's talk about a super positive story. Let's talk about an associate dentist mm -hmm. who's worked with a group practice for three years, mm -hmm. making 200 grand a year. And mm -hmm. this person says, I want to go start my own practice. You sure. know what the owners of that practice say? Awesome. Great. You know, they're probably not going to start it next door for many reasons. Yep. So let's say they go to work with you. And I mean, I want to connect with you because maybe you can help that, you know, many associate dentists who leave a job they like, they yep. actually want to find their replacement. You know, they get into a specialty yep. program, but talk to me about this associate who's been mentored by a good group practice. Yep. Group practice owners are abundance minded and yep. they say, great job, Dr. A, go do that. Yeah. 
Walk us through working with you. Do they do a call? You know, yeah. should they pick out a space before they talk to you? They should do nothing. <laughs> uh, I hope they do nothing like pick out a space because if they've already chosen that, it's really hard to undo those choices. And that's some of the failures or the struggling startups because they went down the first path, which they thought, which was, I just go find space and get a loan. Truth be told, all you need is space and a loan and some chairs. You have a startup practice. But the idea of starting a practice isn't just about, I got the doors open. It's how do I thrive in having a startup? So our initial first step is, hey, let's have a conversation. Let's see, like, what are you really looking to do? We may have clients that have been talking with us for two or three years, four years in some cases, before they say, I'm ready to go. It, it takes a lot of like internal like <laughs> conviction and yeah. commitment of like, I want to open a practice with zero customers, zero patients in this case. It takes that first conviction. And then it's like simply, let's have a conversation. Let's outline what your goals are. Let's understand what your vision is. Let's understand like how can we work together collaboratively because I, I, this is not a coin goes in the slot and then out right. pops a practice in 12 months. Yeah. It's not that simple. Like it is working hard. Our team there and, and, and the associate in the dentist working hard to do that. And then it's, you know, it's a 12 to 18 ish month process. And that, that timeline is based upon factors that are out of our control, real estate, environment, you, you know, construction, you, you know, heck it takes 12 months to get permits in the state of Hawaii. Yeah. True story. We know. Um, so there's all those things that are factored into that. Um, and that's what it looks like. You know, we go through step by step, like take the clients through proper demographics, proper you know, funding, proper real estate acquisition. It, not, I'm not saying acquisition. I mean, you give them a sequen the sequence for success, yes. because if you go out of order, you know, uh, it yep. pains me. And I've only learned from you guys now is that like, you know, I get a DM. Hey, Paul, I got a space. I got three operatories. Mm -hmm. I started practicing. I don't think it's going so well. It's very hard to unwind those things. And you want to, yeah. you know, be prepared for sex. Some of the myths, Dennis, think about with startups. How do some of your clients start off with 50 new patients? Like, you know, their first day, they, they're they not going to have zero. What are these things that you do along the way in these 12 to 18 months yeah. to, to make sure there's no crickets on day one? It's really helping young dentists get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You, you know, th th this idea of marketing is like for some, they go onto a Facebook group, not nachos, but like, <laughs> let's say like, or any Facebook group or any forum or it any can be nachos site. too. I it can be, people, they aren't it can be, easy. it can be nachos and <laughs> it can be someone going, what's everybody doing for marketing? It doesn't matter what Paul Goodman does for marketing. It doesn't matter what you do. You may have one thing that worked really well in your practice at that time, five, 10 years from now, or a year ago, but it's not, it's not, it's not relevant to that one person who's opening up in Maine. What it's relevant is having a strategy. And for most, they think about marketing I'm like, A, I'm looking for this trick. Well, there's not a trick. And, and B, right. they're looking for, I think when it comes to marketing, they're scared of like, oh, I don't, I never marketed before. Do you talk to new people every day in a chair in front of you? Well, yeah. It's building connections with people. It's not, it's having conversations with people you never met before, but you do it on a daily basis and they've agreed to have you put your finger, put, put your hands in their mouth. I think it's the marketing has to be a strategy that isn't about like one single tactic or one kind of trick. This is not the matrix where Morpheus says blue or red pill. There's lots of pills you should be taking when it comes to marketing. Then on top of that, getting out there and executing. It's not about perfection. You're not measured in millimeters when it comes to me marketing. Dentistry, measured yeah. in millimeters. Marketing is about, it's not about perfection. It's about taking action. That's what it is. Those who open up with full schedules, executed well, went out into the community, they market themselves because things like, uh, whether it's Google AdWords and things like that take time. SEO strategies take time. What you need to do before your doors open is having your VIP list of like, these are the people I'm going to have from day one. Yeah. It's family, it's friends, I want to it's friends of friends. You know, you, know what I, you know what movie from our childhood has yeah. really, I think, messed up a lot of entrepreneurs? And that's Field of Dreams. Because they say, yeah. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. They were talking about dead <laughs> baseball players from the past. That's it right. should be, if you build it, they won't come unless you market because I was just on a panel Bingo. at the Greater New York and I broke it down and either because I'm, you know, like I was supposed to say, do they know you exist? Spend money getting people to know you exist before you open, right? That's right. Do they know how to become your customer? That's and right. do they know how to come in and pay you? 
And many dentists are just super cheap, super unaware about getting their community to know that they exist. And it comes in all different forms from Facebook to -to face-to-face things. Mm -hmm. And it's wild to me that a dentist will spend hours picking out which CBCT when they all work, they all work, okay? And then spend zero minutes connecting with their community in a meaningful way, whether that's through paid social media or simply visiting people. So I'm glad you dispelled that myth. The next thing I want to share or ask you about is good dentists know to when to stay in their lane. So if you came to my practice and said, Paul, I want you to do a root canal. I say, I will not do it well. You don't want me to do a root canal. You're going to go to an endodontist, right? Right. Good consultants and coaches stay in their lane. Uh, Bad ones don't pretend they can do other jobs. You build a team with one of my best friends, Rob Montgomery. Just talk to the audience for a minute. Like, why do you need a team? Why do you need a Rob Montgomery? Why do you need a real estate agent? Why can't you wear every single hat for this project? Well, a couple of things. Legally speaking, I'm not an attorney, uh, even though I have a couple of people on my team that uh, Rob would attest to, like people like Mike on my team who's my director of consulting, who could almost be a paralegal because he knows yeah. that much about legal leases. Like he can go through a lease and go, he's because you know why? He sees 85 of them a year. Yeah. Seen a couple leases. Um, I, I think important. the other important part is having boots, like we like to say boots on the ground. Like we, like our team is remote. Are we there on site? Yes, at times we are strategically. We're on site with our clients, but we're not an, a real estate agent that's transacting multiple transactions yeah. in that particular marketplace. We're not an attorney that's licensed. We're not an architect that's licensed. Even constr- even contractors, it's like we need to know people that are familiar with the permitting process and things like that within that marketplace. And I think what a lot of, I, I think I'll dispel the other thing is a, a consultant should be guiding the strategies on those. So the thing that we're not going to do is say, just call these people, let us know what happens. That's not a strategy. That's just like an electronic version of a Rolodex. Yeah. And it dates both of us when I say the word <laughs> Rolodex. No one knows what a Rolodex is. You don't need me or my team to say, here are names and numbers. What you need to do is like, you need a strategy on how do I, how do these people work as a team in order for me to extract what I need from them um, to go through with those strategies, whether and it's I, legal I agree or with construction. You 100%. Elements. It's like, have these people done this before and do they do it every day so if you came to philadelphia i'll give you five good restaurants in written house square i do it every day you don't have to go on google you don't have to i'll guide you through your restaurant experience Bingo. but if you get a bad meal you're just not happy if you get a bad lease i mean i, I would say maybe i don't want to be old I ruin your career like just use an example some people like positivity some people need to avoid pain right <laughs> yes tell me a lease problem you don't have to name the dentist tell me it doesn't have to be one of your clients like what has happened with the leasing part that you have seen through your travels mm-hmm. where you go, oh my gosh, this dentist has put themselves in a very difficult spot because they did not have a Rob look at this or mm. they did not they have- called the, They called the phone number on the sign. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. That's one thing I say at our course, like don't call the phone number and sign. It's almost like an oath as you leave. Like it, it's almost <laughs> like one of those things, you know, like they had to, it's like a blood oath. Like you don't call yeah, yeah. the real estate sign because they think like, I'm going to find, I'm going to find a better deal by myself. No, you won't. Uh, I think someone posted maybe in nachos the other day or, or one of the Facebook groups, like, Hey, I'm looking at least what I should, what I should be doing. Stop. Don't right. talk to them anymore by yourself unless you've done this hundreds of times because there's two deals. There's like the deal when you come in by yourself, and then there's the other deal. Oh, you're property represented. Oh, that's going to look a little bit different. I think that's the biggest mistake is jumping into the real estate, not being properly represented into those conversations. Because the, the soon as you open your mouth on that transaction, you're basically represented by yourself if you do it yourself. And, yeah. and for those, like it, it, the wrong lease, it's not a life killer. It's It sets you back. It could... It could it is the most important document anybody ever signed, whether it's a lease or the real estate is the most important document any startup will ever sign. Get it done right. Have pay to have it done right. Have it done properly and understand it. You'll never be an expert at it. I don't expect any of our clients to leave and go, cool, real estate. I think we're going to go to do that yeah. now. But they have a, a better understanding of their transaction. And this is not the time to be dentist cheap. As you know, as we wrap up, there's this couple of, because yeah. you don't want to be dentist cheap on these nope. once decisions. Most dentists only ever own one practice, right? right? So I go to speak to dental schools and I have yep. these awesome dental students who are enthusiastic. They're D2s. They go, Paul, I want to own five practices. I said, how about one practice, right? That's Because many people own one practice and they never want to own another practice. <laughs> so one of the things I want to share is at Dentist Job Connect, Dr. Yep. Andrew Vallow, He's yep. one of our best clients, okay? And he's one of yours. So when Dr. Andrew lists a job yep. with us, 
he goes on Facebook and makes a nice promotional post, a fun one, right? Yeah. He pays attention to the resumes that come in. He connects with them immediately. So he role models really, really good behavior to be successful. Cool. Then we have other clients, not really nameless, who never check their portal and they don't make posts. And they say, why mm -hmm. didn't I get any associates? And I said, this is a relationship thing. Now bring us with your startup clients. You don't have to name yeah. names. What are some of the behaviors of a good client? So people are saying, I might want to work with ideal practices. What should I expect? I got to keep my associate job for a little longer. I got to be able to connect with them at night. I got to pay attention yeah. to emails. Walk us through that. I, I think first thing is it needs to be understood that this is a collaboration. It, it is a collaboration. It's not just like, hey, here's a service and it's just going to happen. I think the biggest success stories we ever had were just the greatest implementers. I tell yeah. clients all the time, results are equal to vision plus implementation. Just like, hey, um, Dr. Andrew, like I'll give a shout out to him. My teeth are nice and straight. You know why? I did Invisalign with him for six months, right. but I wore my trays 20 plus hours a day. I followed through with the implementation and I told him what I wanted to have. And now I have a, a great smile and everything's straight. Our greatest clients are just that. They're ones that follow through and really implement and really go out and into the communities and execute on the strategies themselves. The strategies are only as good as they are. The, the, the ones that stumble are the ones who are slow of, of making the, de the decision and the ones that are slow to, to implement, especially when it comes to marketing. They're expecting like, I have a website, this should work. And it's like, well, no, what are the other things you've done? Yes. And I can think of a few clients that, you know, my advisors are working with right now. It's like, they're struggling a little bit, you know, in the beginning, because they maybe have like somebody in their ear, whether it's, you know, a, a family member or somebody who's like, that's there, it's preventing them from even really executing really, really yeah. well, but they're actually, they're not committing themselves of actually executing. They're saying, oh yeah, I'm going to go do those things. And it's like, yeah, but I can't make you do them. It, you just have to do that. So I think it's having tough conversations saying, uh, Dr. Andrew was a great implementer. He said, this is what I'm going to do. Here's my VIP list. Here's how I'm going to get people through the door from day one and a very competitive area. I'm in Tampa. There's a couple dentists around here. Yeah. He just, he, he did really, really well. It wasn't his demographic. I, I, Steven, you've breathing. helped yourself. I'm telling you, you know, we'll give you this copy of this. You got to say to these clients, these dentists, yep. you got to wear your trays. I wore my trays in this process. You got to wear your trays and then Free say trays. wearing your trays is connecting with the equipment, people, the marketing, because that will, that's a feeling inside of dentists. Cause we've had patients complain. Yes. Our work didn't turn out so well. They didn't yep. take care of it. They didn't come back. They didn't wear your trays. So wear your trays. I love, if you want to be a successful client, you got to wear your trays like that. Well, this was awesome. Steven stick around for a minute, Baseball. but as we wrap up, people can reach out to us at dentistjobconnect.com. Uh, Ideal Practice is an amazing sponsor of our group. You can get in on our free book deal. But if they just wanted to find out more about you right now, what's the best website to go to, Stephen? Idealpractices.com, www.idealpractices.com. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing with me, Stephen. Thanks, Paul.